Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Joel Irway with DailyFEExamPrep.com and in today's lesson we are going to be talking about part 5 of the algebra of complex numbers and specifically talking about Euler's identity. So let's get right to it. So the goal of today's lesson is to give you a brief overview of Euler's identity and its usage to solve problems related to complex numbers and trigonometry. And the overview structure of today's lesson is first we'll talk about the details and specifics of Euler's identity, uh, when would we use Euler's identity, how would we know to use Euler's identity when we look at it for a problem, we'll walk through a specific example, and I'll give you some additional sample problems to take home with you after the lesson. Now, the details of Euler's identity. Now, Euler's formula is defined as e raised to the j theta is equal to cosine theta plus j sine theta. And e is equal to 2.71828, and it's also defined as Euler's number. Now, e is also the base of natural logarithm ln. It's an irrational number whose exact value is given by the series e is equal to 1 plus 1 divided by 1 factorial plus 1 divided by 2 factorial, and so on and so forth. Now, changing theta into minus theta gives the identity e raised to the minus j theta is equal to cosine times cosine of negative theta plus j sine of negative theta. Since sine is an odd function, now remember, a function f of x is an odd function if f of minus x is equal to minus fx. And cosine is an even function, which means um, an even function is defined as f of minus x is equal to f of x. Then cosine of minus theta is equal to cosine theta and sine of minus theta equals minus sine theta. So e raised to the minus j theta is equal to cosine theta minus j sine theta. Now, if that confuses you at all, it confused me when I, um, when I first started to review this again. Spend some time on this because it is important. Um, it's important to uh, review the difference of an odd and an even function, which is sine and cosine, and really just try and wrap your head around this. So if you need to, spend a couple extra minutes on this slide. So if we add e raised to the j theta and e raised to the minus j theta, that gives us e times j theta, e raised to the j theta plus e raised to the minus j theta is equal to cosine theta plus j sine theta plus cosine theta minus j sine theta. And that equals two cosine theta, which gives us cosine theta is equal to e raised to the j theta plus e raised to the minus j theta divided by two. Now, if we subtract e raised to the minus j theta from e raised to the positive j theta, that gives us the following definition, which is cosine theta plus j sine theta minus cosine theta minus j sine theta is equal to 2j sine theta. And that gives us sine theta is equal to e raised to the j theta plus e raised to the minus j theta divided by 2j. Okay, so now we have a definition for sine theta and cosine theta in terms of Euler's identity. So when do we use Euler's identity? Well, the Euler identity is usually used to simplify trigonometric expressions and simplifying the complex numbers while calculating the roots of the complex numbers. Euler's identity can also be used to prove some, of, some trigonome, trigonometric identities. For example, minus sine of a plus b is equal to sine a times cosine b plus cosine a times sine b. And it can be easily proved with the help of Euler's identity. Sometimes it's also helpful to express sine of x is equal to the imaginary form of e raised to the jx, and cosine x is the real part of e raised to the jx, so imaginary and real components. So expressing sine and cosine as real and imaginary parts of e raised to the jx helps to simplify lots of problems. So how do we know when to use Euler's identity? Well, we should use Euler's identity when it makes the problem simpler. For example, we know that sine of 3a is equal to 3 sine a minus 4 times the sine cubed of a. This can be proven using the usual trigono trigonometry, but as the coefficients of a goes up, for example, sine of 9a, then it becomes harder to express in terms of the power of sine a. Now we know it's time to use Euler's identity. 
So similarly, if we were to calculate j raised to the j, the expression is quite complicated and seems impossible in, a, in rectangular form. So this is another example where we can use Euler's identity to simplify that expression. So let's do that as an example. So the example is evaluate j raised to the j. Um, we first need to convert j into polar form. So since j is equal to 0 plus 1j, we get r is equal to the square root of 0 squared plus 1 squared, and theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 1 divided by 0, which equals pi over 2. Now in polar form, we have j is equal to 1 times the cosine of pi over 2 <clears throat> plus j sine pi over 2, and that equals 1 times e raised to the j times pi over 2. Since we know what that equals, since we know what that what j equals, if we take j and raise it to its own power, then we get e raised to the j times pi over 2 raised to the j, and that equals e raised to the j squared times pi over 2. And we know that j squared is equal to minus 1, so e raised to the j squared of pi over 2 actually equals e raised to the minus pi over 2. So that's the end of the lesson for today. Um, it, what's next? Well, members, as you know, have access to download the full lesson plan. So if you need it, we have the full report um, included in your lesson content. So be sure to grab that and use it for reference. Um, also, check out the additional sample problems for more practice. I included three of them in this lesson content. And if you have any further questions, please let me know in uh, the comments below and uh, so we can help make this the uh, most intelligent engineering community possible. So uh, if you enjoy this video, as always, please like and share these with your engineering friends so we can help grow this community. And thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.